happy Aloha Friday, everyone. You are tuned in to Stan the Energy Man. Stan is actually out for today, and so I'm filling in. My name is Rachel, the Energy Woman, and I'm here today to talk a little bit about clean energy and a lot about Energy Action Month, which will kick off tomorrow. Um, today we have Veronica Rocha from the State Energy Office. She is the Renewable Energy Program Manager. Welcome, Veronica. Thank you for joining us. Thanks so much for having me on the show, Rachel. It's so good to be here. Thank you. So, Renewable Energy Program <laughs> Manager, what does that even mean? It basically means I help the state meet the 100% renewable energy yes. goal by the year 2045. And so that's a combination of working on legislation, uh, of course with our legislators and the governor's office, also get involved in a lot of regulatory proceedings with the Hawaii Public Utilities uh, Commission as an intervener and other stakeholders. Oh. And then we work on a lot of programs and projects to make sure that we really push the industry as a whole and the market as a whole to be able to achieve the 100% renewable portfolio standard. And that's all under, <laughs> <laughs> that's quite a bit, I mean, that's a team of people, I'm sure, then. Yeah, we actually have a very small team of people, mm -hmm. uh, but we have, we're part of a very large, integrated community. So, uh, talking about the team, uh, three guys in my group, so there's uh, Cameron, mm -hmm. he's been in the team uh, the longest, and his background's all about um, environmental uh, analysis, permitting, okay. siting, that sort of thing. And then we have Ryan Morita, his background is in finance and project management. Mm -hmm. And then the third gentleman is uh, Shelton Honda, yeah. and his background, he actually came from HECO, his background is electrical engineering. So we have a really small wow. group, but we have a very robust, well-rounded group. Awesome. Um, and you know, we, we have a lot of fun in, in doing what we do and really believe in our work. Outstanding. Yeah. So perhaps we could take a step back a little and mm -hmm. talk about what the State Energy Office is. Um, you mentioned some yeah. of the different ways that they engage with the community mm -hmm. and regulatory agencies, but can you speak about what the State Energy Office history has been and kind of what, what that progression has been to where they are today? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, I'm going to take a really big step back. So. The governor's office has various cabinet level positions, mm -hmm. which are all departments. Okay. And the, uh, the department that the Hawaii State Energy Office is an agency of is the Department of Business, Economic Development and Tourism, often simply called DBET. Okay. Okay. So now going down to the Hawaii State Energy Office as an agency, mm -hmm. we have four branches. My branch, Renewable Energy Branch, okay. Energy Efficiency, trying, uh, not trying, working really hard to get the state to achieve 30% energy efficiency by the year 2030. Okay. And then we have the Energy Systems and Planning Group. And that effort, the effort there is to uh, look at the overall energy ecosystem and see how best we can get and plan towards 100% renewable energy, meeting our energy efficiency goals and even in transportation how do we clean oh. up transportation okay. and then lastly the clean energy systems okay. group works holistically with all of us on new innovations new ways of catalyzing clean energy throughout the state okay so that's a pretty broad swath of both um, <laughs> yeah. expertise I'm sure <laughs> yeah um, wow what a depth of background and experience yeah okay so in the renewable energy branch mm -hmm. um, you mentioned intervening mm -hmm. with the PUC you mentioned some other regulatory efforts mm -hmm. um, um, can you talk a little bit about what that entails? Like, so let's say okay. a snapshot, maybe what your day looks like. What type of engagements do you have? Maybe even a week. Let's do a week. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, a day could vary, really depending on what's going on. Um, the Public Utilities Commission issues dockets, mm -hmm. which are essentially investigations into specific topics. So I'll, I'll just ramble a few <laughs> names of dockets that are ongoing right now. Sure. There's a power supply improvement plan looking at overall the electric utilities mm -hmm. and how to match the resources, mm -hmm. clean energy resources and, and other um, fossil, for example, towards uh, to match up with the demand towards right cleaning mm -hmm. the overall um, sector for more renewable energy. So that's one ginormous proceeding right now. The other one is distributed energy resources docket, and that's looking at like distributed PV and distributed water heaters, and and how do we incorporate that into overall planning, the resource mm. planning, right? There's there's many, many others, but I, I won't bore you. <laughs> but let's just say that, so the PUC issues these dockets. Mm -hmm. You can apply to be an intervener, which means you can submit your comments. And those comments would, of course, be considered by the Public Utilities Commission mm -hmm. as they ultimately issue an order. Mm -hmm. And when they say uh, they issue an order, what that means is 
this is our decision on how we want to proceed. And based on those orders, that is how ultimately the electric utilities mm -hmm. need to proceed and follow what the public utilities is telling them to do. Okay, so that sounds like an intervener has a pretty integral part in yes. shaping what policy looks like moving forward for the state, it sounds. Yes, absolutely. Excellent. Yeah. So a few things you threw out there. <laughs> I threw out a lot. Resources. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's, so I'll preface a little bit by saying, I mean, we've worked together before, which yeah. has been excellent. And on a broad swath of projects, um, mm -hmm. we've worked on hydrogen, particularly most recently. But um, I also was pleased to see you as a panelist in a recent discussion with Hawaii Women Lawyers. Thank you. Um, and so it's really fascinating to see both the work you do kind of behind the scenes and regulatory space and planning and analysis, but then to also see you carry that work forward um, and sharing that information with the community and practitioners as well as people who are just interested in learning more about energy work. And so can you talk a little bit about what the State Energy Office as a whole does? I know I've seen Mark Lick a number of places in panel discussions, but if you could talk about how community members can get some of this information without necessarily engaging one-on-one. -on -one. Sure. We spend quite a bit of time and in, in, uh, resources, both our personal time as well as just like marketing, communications, mm -hmm. resources on uh, directed through like our website. Right. Uh, we have a lot of information with regards to the state energy goals, but then we do a deeper dive into mm -hmm. actual clean energy facts yes. uh, that the, the industry may be, uh, or sorry, the general public may be interested in, such mm -hmm. as like how much PV do we have and how much of that is distributed versus utility mm -hmm. and how much wind do we have. And, and then we also provide quite a bit of like latest news mm -hmm. as to what is happening in the industry. Uh, for example, you mentioned Mark, uh, myself, uh, if we have speaking engagements that um, uh, there's follow-up uh, communications mm -hmm. through the press and the media, we tend to publish those on our website. So okay. it's a really good resource, publications. Mm -hmm. We get involved in a lot of um, you know, uh, research, whether it's on policy matters okay. or, or other things, and whatever research we get involved in, we also publish on our website. So it really is a wealth of information for anybody that wants to learn a bit more. Mm. And then in terms of getting involved, um, you know, I, I really have to say that some wonderful ways of getting involved is one through legislation. Yes. And really telling your legislatures legislators what you want mm -hmm. in terms of Hawaii and uh, towards its goal of renewable energy mm -hmm. or, or anything else that you want them to know about whether or not you support a position uh, that they have or not. So I think that's a fantastic way of getting involved. The other one, I mentioned dockets. Mm -hmm. Even if you are not an intervener, you can still um, submit your comments on uh, the public utilities uh, website. They have a docket mm -hmm. uh, portal, mm -hmm. and you can submit your comments on particular dockets, and those things do get considered by the Public Utilities Commission. Okay. Um, we also have on our website uh, a portal by which if you're a developer and you want assistance, hmm. complete our questionnaire and we'll reach out to you with more specific assistance, okay. or simply drop us a line and we're happy to chat with you. Okay, yeah. so you mentioned a developer having um, mm -hmm. kind of immediate access. Is that also open to just interested individuals? Is that they give you a call and get more information? It, it really is open to anybody. Mm. The questionnaire is more targeted to developers. I see. So sometimes they have questions about incentives or they have questions about permitting uh, okay. or, or whatnot. So what, when we have more information as to what they're looking for, how the type of assistance that they need, mm -hmm. we can better get the information ahead of right. time in communicating with them. So, uh, but you know, certainly the general public can use it. Uh, we also have a public uh, email address okay. where they can contact us or just pick up the phone. We get a lot of those inquiries pretty much on a daily basis. Okay. Yeah. Would you mind providing the email address? Oh, I don't have it on the top of okay. my head. Okay. Okay. But, but you, the website. Yeah. If you go to energy.hawaii.gov, okay. you're going to be able to find everything that I just spoke about. Excellent. Yeah. And the website actually is pretty robust. Um, I signed up for the newsletter so I, <laughs> I appreciate that Rachel. Yeah, Thank so you. I get the regular updates yeah. and the information is certainly timely and very useful um, just to see kind of broad mm -hmm. scale what's happening across the state um, spec well for a state that's separated by water um, with its different co counties mm -hmm. it's really really um, it's a nice place to go to get singular information on a particular topic so yeah. thank you for your work to provide that information oh sure um, happy to yeah, yeah. So, as mm -hmm. you mentioned, opportunities to engage the community um, as well as informational speaking events. I, I wanted to mention an upcoming event um, yes. that you all are partnering mm -hmm. on. So, for 
with HECO, um, I think the 13th year now, um, they're hosting a clean energy fair. Mm -hmm. Actually, I'm probably not going to get the name right. It's, um, we're going to say an energy fair. Sure. But so tomorrow at yes. Kahala Mall is mm -hmm. October 1st, mm -hmm. and it's a kickoff for Energy Action Month. Mm -hmm. um, and so HECO, along with you, mm -hmm. the State Energy Office, um, as well as Kanu Hawaii, mm -hmm. will have activities for the family mm -hmm. and information available for what's happened in the state. Um, can you tell us a bit about engagements like that where you partner? I know the Verge Conference is a partnership as well, so can you talk about some of the partnerships that the State Energy Office has? Yeah, absolutely. I think the Clean Energy Fair, uh, I actually, again, I don't remember the name. <laughs> I think we're both so trying to blank. <laughs> totally okay. Uh, that's happening tomorrow. Um, that is a really fabulous opportunity for the Keiki to get involved mm -hmm. and start learning yes. about clean energy. And I think the earlier on that we can introduce them to these concepts, the earlier on that they really value, right, what clean energy has to offer in their everyday lives. So right. this is a fabulous, it's really a learning opportunity, okay. but it's also going to be a fun opportunity. There's gonna be games, there's gonna be entertainment. Awesome. I believe in prior events uh, like this one, mm -hmm. I think it attracted something like 3,000 people oh, wow. at Kahala Mall. I know that I'm gonna be swinging by, yes. so hopefully I'll get to see you. Yes when I'm yeah. there. So it'll be really, really fun. Uh, a lot of the engagement that we do does happen through invitations that we get. Okay. So, uh, you know, for the, the general public, if somebody is hosting, I don't know, a community event, mm -hmm. maybe, so for example, this, this week, where did I see you? Um, at the Hawaii Women Lawyers right. Luncheon. Yeah, so somebody from your organization extended an invitation. I okay. was very happy to participate. Um, so we do a lot of these speaking engagements to like, nonprofits or mm. industry organizations, conferences, etc. We do host, uh, this is going to be our second one that we're going to be hosting in 2017, okay. Verge Conference. Yes. And that was amazing. Yes. I just came back from the one in Santa Clara. And I tell you, what I most appreciate about Verge and the way that they um, conduct the conference, mm -hmm. it's really focused around expanding one's understanding mm -hmm. of the overall clean energy ecosystem. So for example, did you know that in order to have clean water, you need to have electricity? And in order to have electricity, you need water, right? Okay. And in order to Gen produced either one of them, there is consumption of electricity and consumption of water. Yes. So, which begs the question, okay, as we're getting more people in this earth, mm -hmm. right, and we have fewer resources, what are we going to do? Right. So it, it was just a fascinating way to explore that topic at the, the last uh, Verge meeting, mm -hmm. uh, Verge conference, which happened in Santa Clara, and really excited to see what we have in store for next year, Verge 17, uh, or actually, I should say, Verge Hawaii in 2017, which is gonna be in June. So I appreciate you making that distinction. Distinction. I was going to mention, um, for those who aren't aware mm -hmm. of Verge, it's an ongoing, I don't know if it's throughout the entire year, but mm -hmm. I know there's a series of conferences at different locations, yes. but there's almost a consortium or a cohort of like Verge conferences. Can you talk a bit about that, the Verge? The ver what is the Verge? You know, I, I'm, not, I'm not a Verge expert. Yeah, I mean, yeah. certainly they are our contractor. Okay. Um, Green Tech Media. Yes. Um, they, they were one of the pioneers, I would say, in really publishing about clean energy and mm. mean, um, mainstream uh, media. Okay. They've been around for a couple of decades now. Um, so, but besides their publications, and now like they have blogs and a lot of online content okay. uh, versus like publishing on paper, which right. is how they started. It's oh, cool. amazing, right? Um, they also do these conferences focused on various topics. Okay. So far, I've participated in three. So the first one oh. was Grid Edge, and okay. that was in 2015 in San Diego. And it was all about the Grid Edge. Are you familiar with this concept? No, this is news to me. <laughs> yeah, it, it's super Sorry. fascinating, super fascinating. It's the idea that essentially for right now the utility mm -hmm. has visibility into one's um, energy but also okay. control over one's energy consumption right. uh, energy generation up to basically like your house your mm -hmm. meter that sort of thing so that's the grid edge okay so the idea is going beyond it mm -hmm. right and now you start getting into like really interesting relationships and dynamic yes for example, okay, if you have uh, a PV system mm -hmm. and it has storage, and so now you're generating uh, renewable energy, mm -hmm. and you're maybe storing some renewable energy, 
uh, and you're connected to the grid, and now you give visibility to the utility to oh, your system, mm -hmm. right? Um, and the utility needs to tap into your system in order to keep uh, the grid up and running, okay. right? So should they be compensating you? How much should they be compensating you? Mm -hmm. Or is it basically um, in order for you to be connected, do you give that to them for free, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm not advocating for either one. I'm mm -hmm. simply pointing out there's there's all these complexities that this concept of the grid edge and being able to pierce mm -hmm. through the grid edge provides, right? So that's one conference. I don't know if they've, they've kept doing it. The other one is uh, Verge Hawaii, yeah. which took place 2016. We're starting the planning for 2017, mm -hmm. um, and that's here in Honolulu. It's in June, mm -hmm. and uh, in this last uh, Verge, we really explored everything about energy, not yes. only in the electricity sector, but also in transportation. Mm -hmm. uh, too early for me to talk about what we're going to be exploring in the right. next Verge. Um, and then you have what they call Verge 16 or Verge 17, mm -hmm. and it's really the confluence, I would say, of okay. like all... Um, I know all the topics in one location typically takes place uh, in California. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, there's also like uh, Verge uh, more focused on uh, around New York. So okay. they have like a, a New York rev. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I'm not an expert on Verge, okay. but they're all great learning opportunities, great way to expand your understanding of the complexities right. uh, related to renewable energy and energy efficiency and smart grid, et cetera, but also the, the vast opportunities. And you come back feeling just very excited. That's super exciting. Yeah. I hadn't realized the depth, and I certainly didn't realize the term yeah. grid edge, but that's an exciting concept and one we are exploring, particularly mm -hmm. here in Hawaii, but yes. definitely across the nation. Um, so I appreciate you taking this time. Sure. We're going to give our listeners a little bit of a break, and we'll be back in a moment to talk more about Veronica Rocha's efforts with the State Energy office. Thanks for tuning in. This is John Adenilia from Thank Tech Hawaii, Keys to Success. We'd like to thank all of our viewers for tuning in and enjoying the show as we enjoy giving it to you. We are very grateful for all the wonderful feedback we receive from our viewers. My name is Danelia, D-A-N-E-L-I-A. -E and I'm the other half of the duo, John Newman. We thank you all. Aloha. Aloha. Thanks for hanging on, and we're back with Veronica Rocha from the State Energy Office, a Renewable Energy Program Manager. And we've been chatting a bit about what's happening in the state of Hawaii, but also across the nation in clean energy. As we kick off Clean Energy or Energy Action Month in October, um, we've just been discovering the many things that are taking place and the projects that are happening here in the state. So, Veronica, thank you again for joining sure. us today. And we chatted a little bit um, just about broad scale, the different engagements that the State Energy Office has, the different speaking engagements and regulatory mm -hmm. inputs and informational opportunities for entities across the state. So I wondered if you could talk in a bit more specific terms um, about some of the projects that you personally oversee. Oh, sure. You know, one of the um, collaborations that I was in, involved in uh, helping to craft, not necessarily at leading the effort, was at, at Verge yes. 2016. Um, Governor Ige and Assistant Secretary of the Navy, mm -hmm. McGinn, signed a Memorandum of Understanding, or MOU, mm -hmm. for the Navy and the state of Hawaii to work more collaboratively on energy efforts, right? Both the Navy and the state of Hawaii, we have very aggressive clean energy goals, yes. and so therefore <laughs> a lot of overlap in both our challenges and opportunities and solutions. So uh, there were three working groups that were established. Mm -hmm. um, one of them is on alternative uh, fuels and transportation. The second one is on resiliency. Mm -hmm. And then the third one is on renewable energy. And I'm leading the effort in the renewable energy space. So it's been really interesting and super fun to connect with the folks from Department of the Navy. Mm -hmm. So shout out to uh, NAFAC Hawaii, NAFAC PAC, <laughs> REPO. Um, it, it's been really good. So we're really now starting to explore in depth, in a bit more depth, I should say, some of the um, initiatives that um, I think both uh, entities okay. have interest on. Mm -hmm. um, most immediately, though, we started to take a look at um, 
and, and I can't go into too much specifics, right. but um, it, it, you know, microgrids. Yes. I think that's an area of mutual interest for both uh, mm -hmm. Department of Defense uh, as well as for the state of Hawaii. So uh, we were able to leverage some non-DOD but still federal funds okay. uh, to help us in evaluating an area and infrastructure uh, towards the development of microgrids in a way that would pull in uh, more renewable energy, oh, but then also provide for greater energy security and resiliency. So, you know, working on that, a little bit too early to disclose more details, mm -hmm. but, you know, ec excited for the collaboration that Definitely. we have going on. Yeah, that's huge. I really appreciate you talking about the collaboration because mm -hmm. I think that's a part that sometimes is missed because mm -hmm. so much of the work happens behind the scenes. Um, people don't always have an opportunity to see the levels at which the State Energy Office engages, mm -hmm. but also the projects that you all are working on. So I've been fortunate to work with you on some hydrogen efforts um, yeah. and just um, really that have an international mm -hmm. scope. And so if you could talk about some of the engagements that the State Energy Office as a whole has, um, perhaps some of its international partners and some of the things that are being looked at currently. Yikes, that, that's, I could go on for a long time <laughs> on that. I can tell you that from a personal perspective, I've really um, been inspired by this uh, MOU between the State of Hawaii and Department of the Navy, and it got me thinking, well, how can we do more of this, mm. whether or not we have an MOU? Okay. Right? So. Uh, going back to Verge, I keep bringing it up because it's so fresh on my mind. Mm -hmm. It just happened last week, but um, I, I, again, I'm not sure like to what extent uh, you're familiar with this. Microsoft, Google, Facebook, mm -hmm. they have very aggressive rene renewable energy targets. Okay. Many of those guys, 100% renewable energy. Oh wow! Which leads me to believe that when Hawaii, when we uh, passed our 100% renewable energy uh, bill, that that really had a ripple effect and mm -hmm. inspired others, mm -hmm. right? So, um, we, I participated in a summit with Microsoft and all these people and several like utilities mm -hmm. from around the U.S. and it was all of like how do we move forward? And one of the challenges that was brought up, and it, this was in the context of electric vehicles and, okay. and increasing the electrification of transportation, um, one of the uh, California electric utilities said, well, one of the challenges that we have is when we have a cool idea for like a new electric vehicle charging station mm -hmm. demonstration project, it is so hard for us to get it done because of all of the uh, protocols okay. that need to be had because they have limited funds because X, Y, C. And so uh, one of the big, uh, you know, companies, I'm not going to say which one, yeah. so I don't want to put anybody, you know, in a bad position, uh, raised their hand and said, well, if you tell me what challenges you're having, mm. then I can test them out in my facility, right? Oh, wow. And, and if you think about it, some of these um, data centers for like mm -hmm. Microsoft, Google, right. et cetera, they're so huge that they're consuming as much energy as a city, as yes. a state, as even like an island, mm -hmm. right? So they actually could be a beautiful place to mm -hmm. test some of these things. So that got me thinking, I think there's a wonderful opportunity here mm. to work across borders, mm -hmm. even more so in, uh, in a very meaningful way. So that's something where I'm starting to explore that concept that I just okay. relayed uh, and started to reach out to potential partners in California and also Alaska. So hopefully there'll be a little bit more to come on that. Okay, yeah. wow, that's really exciting. Yeah. It's exciting to think, um, well, not only one that people are thinking that broadly, mm -hmm. but that they're also willing to partner in yes. that type of a way. I mean, mm -hmm. um, for businesses as large as the ones you named, it's certainly, it's impactful if they're able to make the change, but um, it also speaks a lot to the merit of the work that we're doing um, for someone to be able to assume that risk and say that this is meaningful and we'll, we'll test it and we'll make sure that it gets better and we'll undertake that responsibility. So yeah. I think it's fantastic that you're exploring that. Yeah, I'm excited about it. So we'll see. I mean, it's, it's still very, very early on, uh, but you know, you have to plant a seed and kind of see yes. where it takes you, right? Indeed, yeah. indeed, I agree. Yeah. And so we talked a bit about, um, I think when we first met, it might have been in relationship to opportunities to engage with, with Japan particularly, mm -hmm. um, but just seeing how we can branch outside of the U.S. and what other nations are doing and mm -hmm. what some of the challenges people have experienced, um, both in planning and implementation. And it's really been exciting for me to see how different governments move forward with mm -hmm. renewable energy efforts. And I wonder what are some of the lessons you've learned from those engagements? It takes time. Mm. And it's all, um, it's very much a relationship. 
based approach. Um, mm. I remember actually me, you, and Stan, we were talking and I was expressing some frustration. Right. Uh, and I'm not going to say which country or, or why, mm -hmm. about like, God, things just take so long and I just don't know what to do, what email to send, what phone call to make. And then Stan actually said, well, have you thought about just calling and checking in and see how they're doing after mm -hmm. you know some event I was mm -hmm. like no okay. <laughs> but I think that really alerted me to um, it, it's based on relationships and yeah. I think since then uh, we've had a bit more meaningful dialogue and there appears to be you know more interest in in a mm -hmm. proposal that mm -hmm. we're working together with a potential international partner okay yeah. That's really promising to hear. Yeah. And it's something that's encouraging. I mean, Hawaii has so many sister state mm -hmm. and sister city relationships. Um, it's been nice to work across departments throughout the state. So working with Hawaii National Energy Institute as well as DBED and just really kind of spanning the spectrum of engagement across the state mm -hmm. in their agencies um, has been an exciting thing for me. I must admit, when we think about energy and we talk about electricity and kind of what it means, um, I think we can speak about it in a very broad way um, and people understand that it's important. But when you start realizing the dependency that each of us have as an agency but as individuals as well, um, it hits home a little bit more. And so the work that we do I find is, is pretty meaningful. And so when you mentioned being ex inspired yeah. and just really wanting to think more about how, how we can explore different types of partnerships, mm -hmm. It's really inspiring to hear and it's, it's grateful, I mean, I'm grateful that we have people like that within our state agencies, so people like that who are impacting upcoming policies. So I wanted to thank you for your time this afternoon oh, um, thank and thank you. you for your ongoing efforts for renewable energy for the state. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Always great to connect with you and uh, be on your show. So thank you, Rachel. Appreciate thank it. Thank you. And thank you, studio audience, for tuning in to Stand the Energy Man. Um, thank you for allowing me to fill in for my boss and spending a little bit of time as we kick off Energy Action Month in October. Have a wonderful weekend and have an awesome energy month. Aloha.